Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the discussion of the Google Plus Platform Office Hours. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of presenting some content um, and you know talking about it, we're, we're going to focus on the questions and answer section that was normally the second half of our hangout. Um, because there's a lot of feedback that, that people want to ask their questions. So we want to devote more time to that. So um, I'm just going to do a little basic stuff. Do you guys want to well, have a question? Well, let's do intros. Okay, so introductions. Good idea. I'll start since I already waved my hand. Jonathan Berry, developer advocate on Google Plus Hangouts. I'm Wolf Dobson. I'm a developer programs engineer on Hangouts. And I'm Jenny Murphy. I'm also a developer program engineer uh, on Google Plus Platform. Uh, my name is Fraser Kane. I am the publisher of Universe Today, and we've been doing a lot of sort of cool live broadcasts using Hangouts on Air. Hi, I'm Nick. This is Sonia. We're at Neoteric Design. We do web application design and development, primarily in Ruby on Rails. And we're using Hangouts for training and for um, collaboration. Great. And last but not least, I saw that um, Charles, you just joined. I did. I'm Charles Jamet. I'm a developer. Uh, I work for ComC Media, which is my own company. And I'm building a, an app in Hangouts that uh, allows people to play games, uh, RPG games online, Dungeons and Dragons type games. Oh, right. To okay. visualize it, roll dice, do everything in a shared environment that you would right. normally do around a table. Fraser actually is part of my little posse. Yeah. He's the one who dragged me into this. <laughs> Gave me hours and hours and hours of extra work to do every day. Thank you, Fraser. <laughs> well, we're really looking forward to seeing what you come up with once the features are there to support on your goals. Well, it's it's uh, it's playable now. We've been using it for our weekly two of our weekly games. So anybody who wants to take a look at it and give me their feedback, I'd be more than happy to give you a walkthrough at some point. Sure. Very cool. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to see that. Yeah, definitely. So I guess we, we might as well get into the questions uh, now that the introductions are, are are wrapped up. So does anyone in the channel have a question they would like to ask? I'm about seven. Well, that was number one. <laughs> well, at number one, uh, is there a limit to the team size that you can have in your app? Um, there is. Um, I, it's not infinite. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the number is, but it will eventually decide that you've had enough. Uh, but I think that number is, let me see, I'm trying to think of what the biggest ones I've had are. Um, it, it's, it's in the... Uh, Gosh, I have to get back to you on what exactly the number is. I know like a hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had I had a little error for a while where I, I wasn't quite able to correlate it to anything, but I thought that maybe it was the number of people in my team. I had around 20, 22 or 23, and a lot of people were getting a, a blue screen. They weren't able to join the app, and then once I dropped it, the next day or two days later, they were able to get in, but uh, it might have been tied to something else. I yeah, sure. I, I, that, that's interesting. Um, I know that if you add them to the team while the Hangout is running, it doesn't reboot, it doesn't reload the ACL. Uh, okay. So uh, I've had that problem where I'm like, quick, I need you in this Hangout, and I add them to the team, and then I'm like, ah, oh, I've got to restart this Hangout. Right. So that that can definitely happen, but uh, I'm not familiar with why were they uh, were these people. Um, in distant places? Were they in... Uh, well, it, you know, it, it's probably just a coincidence. It, uh, every week we play uh, a game called Apocalypse World, and one week everybody was able to get in, and the next week two or three people, got, I think Fraser got in, but then he couldn't see me, and then everybody else couldn't get in, and they just got sort of a, what did you call it, Fraser? The white screen of serenity. Uh, well, were, you, were, you in, were you in Europe? Uh, no. uh, oh, one guy was in Europe. Yeah, he, he's okay. able to get in just fine now. Okay, it's interesting. There, there was a there was a little bit of there, there was a little bit of a back end uh, thing that that we uh, we kind of modified uh, about a week and a half ago um, that made it uh, made uh, basically things that are farther from Mountain View <laughs> a little bit faster. So um, we improved performance for remote locations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
so that might have been that might have been part of the uh, part of what you were seeing. Um, but like I said, that would that that would have only affected Hangouts uh, the Hangouts API stuff, not the not the main Hangouts. Um, and in terms of the team stuff, uh, if you work with any other Google APIs, it's all sharing the same infrastructure. So not just the the Google Plus or the Hangouts uh, app engine. Uh, they all share that same team management API quota system, and the the limit on the amount of team members is, a, is across all products. So it's not just Google Plus. Uh, I know you know 50 is not an unreasonable team size, uh, but you know a couple hundred would be yeah that would be breaking the bank. Uh, again, we're going to look back and actually find out what the yeah, real no, number that, is. That, that's a good thing. I've only ever got five or six people using it at a time, but. Because I, I want to start running encounters, I want to get some, as many eyes on this as I can to see what people sure. think should be in there. Sure. I, I'm just I'm putting people in, then I'm taking them out afterwards. I guess I'm cycling through people. I, that, I can work with that for the time being. There was one little thing I noticed, and I mentioned it in one of the in the discussion board. Um, when people hit the chat button or resize the window, it seems to trigger the on participants changed. Hmm. Um, yeah, I had uh, glitchy yeah. code in there, and it was it was messing things up. I fixed the code now, but it's still it's still calling that event. Um, that's interesting. I, I know somebody was reporting on the on the group that uh, when they resized the window, they were getting uh, they were getting a, a on uh, on a participants change thing. Yep. Um, I wasn't able to reproduce that. Uh, if you have code that does reproduce that, please add me to the team or send me the XML link, and I will. Uh, uh, I'll take a look because uh, again, uh, um, the chat thing uh, is interesting. Let me actually. <laughs> I'll just take a look while we're talking. Yeah, uh, uh, in my app we have a, a map, and uh, the map ha has a reset button that puts everything back to where it was. So you have tokens that you can drag and drop to show the location of various different people. And when people were hitting the chat button, it was resetting the map. Oh, that's really it was good because it, it it showed me a, an error in my code because it shouldn't have been doing that anyways. But yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Kind of buggered the map for the whole game. Well, I wonder. I wonder if that has to do with uh, were you uh, did you have a whole bunch of people and it was actually resizing the uh, resizing the film strip at the bottom. Um, let me. Yeah, that probably. That, I mean, certainly that would have been happening because when you hit the chat it, chat, it changes the available space. And yeah. when you resize the window, it also changes the available space. Totally right. Check that out. It's uh, it's on clicking the chat. I don't I don't see it on the resize, but it totally happens in the chat. That is a great bug report. I will take that back to the team. Thanks very much. There you go. You said you had seven questions. Let's keep on going. <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to take up the whole time here. But, um, I guess my. My big thing is, and I've asked this question again, so so I apologize for asking it twice, but uh, I, I'm not sure that I got an answer the last time. I think the answer was no, but I'll ask it again. Uh, one of the things I'd really like to have in my app is a permanent data store for text tied to the players. So there's the chat window, which doesn't seem to be permanent. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I can't create an activity or write to an activity from the app or write to the chat uh, pain. But what I'd like to do is, uh, there are a couple of things that people can do in the game. They can write notes about the game or they can roll the dice and I'd like to be able to store that data uh, so they can be pulled up later on. So, um, so store data. Interesting topic. A lot of things we can, we can go into. Uh, first, first of all, um, first question. Does the data from one client need to be available to another client? The data needs to persist from game to game. Uh, not persistent. So the the shared shared state component. So if I'm typing in text, does somebody else need to see my text? Uh, yes, but I've already got that worked out. Okay. So the um, way that I'm doing it right now is I'm dumping it to an S I'm using JSON and I'm dumping it to a MySQL database and then I'm pulling it back out again. Sure. Okay. And that way it's that way it persists from from week to week. I just tag the game, and it doesn't matter if it's a different app, a hangout. You pick the game that you're playing at the beginning of the session, and you can pull up last week's notes. Now, okay, so that's okay, so that's persisting my own data. So if Wolf and I are playing together, and I type something, and you store that in MySQL, will he ever need to read my data? Yes. Or my, okay, so you need to also share its state across multiple participants. Yes. Anybody who's um, playing the game should be able to see anybody else's notes. 
So have you looked at have you looked at the shared state API, which is a JSON like feature? Sorry, yes, but that that only lasts to the end of the Hangout. Right, right. So um, in terms of sh so shared state is one thing. So synchronizing across participants is one piece, and then persistent of data is a second piece. So, so the shared state, sorry, my, just to interrupt. Uh, my understanding of the shared state was there was a limited capacity of around 10k. Is that right? Yes, that is right. That is okay. Right. So that's why I've been using JSON. It's because I end up with too much in that sure. to be, a, and it eventually it sort of dumps data, or I have yep. to dump data myself. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you're doing the, the right option. There's the HTML5 local storage kind of stuff. Um, it is a simple JSON storage mechanism. You can persist that on the client, but if they're in a different client, then it's not going to be synced across different browser sessions. So in reality, you're going beyond the standard use case of shared state, beyond the um, HTML5 local storage stuff. So you got to store it somewhere. And it's right. So, so my, my question, I guess, is that the, the core of the Google Plus uh, system seems to be that I can start an activity. People can comment back. I can limit it to just a certain group of people. But the moment that I go into the app in the Hangout, I lose that functionality, which seems to be core to, to Google+. And I understand why you wouldn't want an app writing activities. You end up with, I mean, I'm assuming that the rationale is that you'll end up like Facebook, where everybody with a WordPress website can post their blog to their Facebook without actually ever having to go into Facebook. And that kind of litters the landscape. But it would be nice to be able to use an activity that's limited to the number of, to the people who are in the Hangout and then pull it up you know, session to session. Oh, okay, so that's actually a different question altogether. You want, you're talking about write APIs. Yeah, I'm not worried about the shared state. I got the shared uh, state. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, that's a different story. Um, yeah. Uh, next week, I want to be able to come back and look at this data. The six months from now, I want to be able to come back and look at this data. I want to be able to carry forward the, the notes from every session sure. into the next session. So actually, um, we can answer the shared the write API question. Um, but before that, it sounds like you're actually asking for a different thing than what you're originally formatting your question. And if you want to see something six months, nine months, a year out uh, in a format that's acceptable for, you know, for your application, actually using the stream is probably not the best solution. You want a custom data store. You want a custom uh, storage that. So the way you're going about it is probably the best for your application. OK. Is it, I mean, yeah. No, no, it works just fine. I've got it. I've got it working just fine. It just seems to me that I'm kind of reproducing what Google Plus already does. It seems. Yeah, but it's, it's your own app, and so what, the, the look and feel. You're never gonna have that same control because it's it'd be through the Google Plus Activity Stream sort of um, implementation. Uh, since it sounds like you're doing it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, oh, and I uh, I just. Uh, ping your friend. Um, sounds like the team size is about uh, 50-ish. Okay. Uh, is ish? Ish. Eh. I wonder if we can add aliases to that. You can add groups. No, you can't add groups. You, can't, you can add groups, but it doesn't work for Hangouts, I don't think. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, I will get back to you on whether, whether groups is a, is a way around adding more people. Um, but uh, the top level is eh, 50. 50-ish. Cool. Cool. Look, what a so, uh, Anybody else in the Hangout? Yeah, I think Nicholas, you mentioned you had a question. Hi guys, can you hear me? Hey, yes, loud there and clear. We go. Uh, thanks for hosting this. So we've been using Google Hangouts um, primarily for training for our clients, um, uh, uh, and we have some really basic level questions. Um, th the first issue we had yesterday was with uh, a client who's in Beijing, and we're in Chicago, and the connection just got really, you know, sketchy. Uh, and we had suggested that he turn off his video so that we could continue to talk through it, and, and that didn't really work out either. So the first question is like when you know the connections are a little bit sketchy, can limiting video or limiting audio can that improve the connection? Um, so uh, we're happy to answer user questions, or like brief ones. This is a developer office hours, so we'll run through your, your quick questions. And, and um, if you have like programming questions, we would better audience. But for the short answer, uh, we've enabled a feature called uh, connection speed. So within the configuration of the Hangout itself, uh, either when you start up the Hangout or any time in it, they can switch it down to a slower connection speed. So the, the quality gets lowered, but then it's um, um, smoother video and audio. 
Right. And that feature is accessible the, uh, from other users' responsibility. Pardon me? That's the users the other users' responsibility yep. to establish their own connection speed. Yep. That is correct. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, cool. Um uh yeah. And uh I think I, I think experimentally I did turn off video from time to time when I was uh when I was debugging and it does it, it does actually improve your uh round trip time, but that I don't think there's science back there. I just noticed that myself. Yeah. We had a game on Saturday night, and one guy was dropping in and dropping out and couldn't get it, and he finally turned off his video, and he was fine for the rest of the session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we have reports of that working in the field. Cool. I think we can now switch over to some of the comments. Yeah. Um, we have two comment streams, because we have some questions from... From before the Hangout began. We have some questions that we can grab. Which one do you want to start with first? Your choice. All right. What's the best the question? The most awesome one. I haven't gotten the most awesome one yet. Oh, you can't start by awesome. There's no start by awesome filter. That's a that should be a good demo. Do you want to put that together? Yeah, um, no, let's do the live ones because uh, of the freshest. And uh, the first one is a feature request on the product. How about fixing the Linux Hangout plugin download link? Uh, if you could reply with where the broken link is, we can get the webmaster to fix that. Yeah. Probably an easy one for us to um, satisfy. Uh, from Jennifer, will G plus allow us to create custom URLs? So by that you mean profile URLs? Um, I assume they mean vanity URLs, so that's a guess. Yeah. Vanity profile URLs. That's a, a great idea. I've heard some requests for that, um, but that's not, not something I, I don't think any of us actually know about. So. In general, we, we don't really talk a lot about future um, future feature releases because things just change here so often that if we told you by the time you know the next week rolled around, it would yeah. no longer be accurate. Yeah, no, we want you we, we want to get you the accurate stuff. Um, that is something you can totally click on send feedback and ask for um, down the lower left hand corner. That is, those people totally read those. <laughs> they all not all you never you're. Not always going to get a reply, but people do definitely read everything that goes through the send feedback. Absolutely. Uh, especially around the platform stuff, which we are more tapped to, uh, feedback around that we actually see. So yeah. not only the office hours is a great place to put that platform feedback, but uh, the, the tool itself when you come across it. Uh, question from Kyle. We had a lot of feature questions today, not around cool. the platform, but happy to answer them. Uh, well, strike through, and he did a little strike through thing. Uh, work in Android, iOS, G plus apps, work on web and mobile. Uh, yes, eventually. Uh, we're working on getting the feature parity in the web app to the mobile app. Obviously, we're working really hard to get that web app the core awesome experience. And then there's mobile teams, both um, dedicated to Android and iOS, uh, making not only those cool features work in mobile, uh, but also making them optimized for the mobile experience. So. Yep. Expect, in general, them to be catching up to the web app and also making its own unique spin on it. Um, people trying to join the Hangouts? Oh, interesting. Glenn, can you create a save a post for later option so that I can quickly peruse through, the, through and hop back to save area for items that I want to read but don't have the time to do right away? Ooh, it's like the, uh, like the, the uh, watch later for YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, great idea. Um, I've seen people hack around some Chrome extensions that integrate with Google Bookmarks or other data stores. Interesting idea. Um, we don't have that feature right now. Um, I haven't seen a lot of interest, but that's definitely a cool thing to, to bubble up to. Yeah, what I'm actually doing to work around that right now, since some people ask some interesting questions that it might take me a while to get back to them, is I'll just click on the little, the little date stamp in the, in the top of the post, which opens up just that post in another tab or window. And I'll just bookmark that using my browser's bookmark feature and return to it later, which is it's really crude, but it works surprisingly well. Uh, actually, Dan suggested to, to Glenn, create a read it later circle with no members and then share any post you want with it later. That's a great idea. That's pretty cool. Uh, Andre asks, please let me block users from the comment right away instead of having to visit his profile. And please make block user comments invisible to me. And please provide an API. An API for uh, blocking like users? There's three or four things in there. Yeah. Uh, better tools around managing spam or unwanted comments. We hear that. Uh, well, on the background, there's 
bunches of people working on the automatic filtration of spam, so a lot of it you don't see. Um, in terms of just blocking people that you're not interested in, uh, yeah, there's always room for improvement. Please use the feedback tool for that kind of stuff. It's exactly what it's there for. Yeah. Uh, how do I make a picture in G plus bigger? Can you add an option to like view an original size or zoom in? Uh, right now, we just have a download feature. So if the author uh, or the photographer allows you to download the feature, that's one way to get around it. Yeah. Um, when you, the, with the, the current UI, uh, it's kind of nice that it automatically resizes to different browser windows, so uh, it doesn't look funky, but then you can't zoom in with the standard browser zoom features. Right, and at this time, the pictures are actually, if you use the download link, if it's available, the pictures are actually available in up to 2048 by 2048 square, which is a pretty large size. So it's, it's not like the original resolution of a raw image shot from a, a 50 megapixel sensor. But it's still a pretty decent size. Um, so if you do the download link, you can see a pretty detailed version of that image. Yes. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. Uh, feature requests. <laughs> Would you like the ability to synchronize a Google Plus page with an existing YouTube and Picasa account? So by that, you're, you're, um, we're assuming you're asking, you want the, the content that's getting posted to a Picasa account or a YouTube channel that you already have established for your entity automatically get synchronized back to your Google Plus stream? Um, this is an interesting idea. Um, this is something that would be great to send via the send feedback feature. Uh, that we, you know, it's down there in the, in the lower corner that we mentioned before. And uh, we'll, we'll consider it. If it's a now, we, we don't have a lot of synchronization features across Google uh, regarding Google Plus, but we have been adding the plus one button. So, for example, in YouTube, you can plus one and share a video directly into uh, Google Plus. Uh, we have that on Blogger. Uh, you mentioned Picasso, we have it in Picasso also. Uh, so, that allows you to at least get kind of there by choosing what you want to share into Google Plus pr pretty easily. Yeah. Um, it's not full sync, but there's actually a reason that we're taking that approach is when you share via the plus one button, we give you the opportunity to annotate and comment on, you know, provide some additional context to what you're sharing. And we, we feel that that provides the highest quality experience in the stream. Um, because you can provide content in that uh, comment about your video that um, just, you know, is, is, gives people who are on Google Plus a little more context that they may not have if they're not, you know, already on YouTube. Uh, I'm we're going to sleep over some of these feature requests because they're, they're re re repetition. Uh, can you add a voting app or integrate plus one in a way to make voting possible? So voting something I've, are polls on posts or something I've seen um, a few different approaches to. Some people are sharing external voting apps, um, which is pretty cool, like they're just uh, including them in the stream, um, you know, just by sharing the link to uh, you know, a Google or something like that. But within the application itself, um, one approach I've experimented with a few times is I'll create a post, comment on it a few times myself with the choices, and then disable comments on that post. So then people can come and plus on the one that they would like to vote for, and that's, it's, it's, it's a simple pulling up, but it's, it's surprisingly effective. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen that done numerous times. Uh, I use that for my own, my own questions. Uh, we actually just launched something kind of cool yesterday. Um, it went under the radar, but with Google Docs, we now allow you to share um, forms directly into Google Plus. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't, it's not like a JavaScript widget of any kind, but it does it, it some of the description for the, for the form, and that's another way to do some sort of polling or question answer. Um, cool. You can share right from um, Google Docs. And we can link to that in the show notes, uh, the blog that we talked about it. Okay. Uh, oh, take a look at Google Docs form. Somebody, Alan. You need to do it. What's that? Yes, that's that's. You need to it announcing it on the uh, in the hangout. This is uh, this is true. Uh, All right, what we got? Um, we have a why can't Google Plus and GTalk merge? It's a pain to have contacts to both. Now. We have been introducing uh, elements of Google Plus into Gmail. Um, and if you notice in the 
Google Plus version of Google Talks. If you're logged in to Google Plus and there's a chat going on, it shows uh, the relationship of people who are actively in your circles. Um, so if you're in Gmail and you see all your offline friends, that's all gray. Um, but in Google Plus plan, we only show the ones who are actually in circles. So we're moving that direction. And comment on all of Google, right? Uh, Google Plus is about making Google a better experience for all our users by adding social components. So Google Plus is going to be part of that Google Talk experience. And just we're working through how to, how to optimize that. Um, so we're getting there. And we're working on it, too. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, is there an API that can have the latest picture in an album displayed first or as a thumbnail for the album automatically? Um, G10. Do you, do you understand that, Jenny? So it sounds like you're asking for an API that will allow you to integrate um, the photos and albums you have up there um, with external sites or applications. The Picasa APIs offer limited access to the photos now. I'm not sure about the details. I don't believe there's um, these exact features you're looking for. But um, we're always looking to expand more Google Plus centric APIs. Um, photos are definitely something we're, we're thinking about. Um, so this is an, an interesting feature that we'll consider when we, we revisit that later. Yep. Uh, Good question. Will there be a connection between Google Plus for business pages, places for business? And I think we've got this one a few times already, yeah. uh, but it's still worth going over again. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting question because you think Google Places pages and, and Google Plus pages look, you know, there's a lot of similar kind of content on there. It would be pretty cool if there was, you know, some, some if they, those, those converged eventually. Um, but this is, again, kind of future looking thing. Um, we don't really know a whole lot about um, um, what's going on there, so not a lot we can tell you other than that would be really cool. Yeah, and in general, uh, the, the Maps business pages have a use case, and it's a different type of application, and the way it bubbles up in search is one way, and the way we do pl the plus pages and how you engage your audience directly through the, the plus pages for businesses is, is right now different, and for good reason. Uh, but definitely there's a world where we can see those merge. So, cool. Uh, on topic question <laughs> from Gerwin. <laughs> uh, you reported um, the, the discussion was just throwing some errors. But uh, on topic is, can someone explain what the language parameter really does in activities.search and people.search? I wasn't able to see a difference from my last test queries. That's a great question. It should be it should be filtering um, by our best guess of the language, but it sh <laughs> you're recording it. It's showing the same results for all of them. Um, I'll loop back with you um, to see yeah, what's up there. That sounds like an, an interesting issue that we should probably fix. Uh, although, in short, short chunks of text sometimes it's difficult to determine the language. So maybe something related to that. But I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. And as, as I recall, we added the enhancement to search in the last year to allow you to filter by language. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I believe that's a pretty recent addition. Yeah, and I, and I believe that's its exact purpose is the way you expect it to behave. Yeah, so it should be a filter for the content that you're searching such that you only, res you only load content in the results set that match the language that you specify in that filter parameter. But if that's not working, something we need to fix. So I'll look back with you. Great question. Uh, G10 has a lot of question related API stuff. Uh, is an API to have custom slideshows for, for, from, from, from photos, photos and albums? <laughs> <laughs> so this is, so you, and we, it sounds like you're asking about something similar to like um, the RockU and, and the old slide plugins that people would use to do the slideshows on their sites. It would be pretty cool. Um, we probably wouldn't, I, I don't know if we would expose a feature like that, although we definitely could. A component that you could drop into your page, one of the social plugins. Um, another option that may exist at some point in time is kind of more raw REST APIs to provide access to that data. Um, neither of those <laughs> exist right now. Um, <laughs> they may exist in the future. It would be pretty cool. It would be a great way to showcase the content on your page um, and profile. Um, Thanks for the idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and regarding to creating your own, 
Um, Jenny mentioned the Picasso APIs. Um, those are using our old GData spec. Um, they're still pretty cool uh, if you're if you're you a Picasso user. And you can do a lot of things with them, like build a slideshow widget from it. Uh, and there's there's some pretty good documentation around how to do that uh, or how to use the Picasso API. Uh, see, so that was the bottom of the live question. Okay. Wait, wait he had a uh, Mike G. Is there a plan to add multiple email contacts to the Google Pages so that every manager can be notified about a post or a change? Um, I think you mean multiple admins for a post page because um, we have that support now, right? Yep. So if you go onto your plus page, there's an option to manage your plus page, um, and there's actually a list of the pages that are like yeah, the pages that exist. And from there, you can actually add up to 50 administrators per um, page. And then all of them will have all the capabilities of any other administrator on the page. That includes notifications, uh, the little red box, yeah. and mm -hmm. all the other fun stuff we provide. Yeah, which is great for organizations because as time passes, the people that manage that page will change hands. And eventually, none of the original group may end up working <laughs> on the page. But the page will live on like the rest of the organization. I have a quick question for mm -hmm. at the bottom of the list. Is there a way to... Um, I'm getting echo. Sorry, I'm just getting some echo on my mic. Uh, is there a way to see um, how many people have circled you back in the API? Or how many people are circled and circled back to a particular user in the API? No, there's no way to get to that in the API right now. Um, but that's something that would be really cool. It's, uh, as, you've, um, as you may have discovered, it's already on the profile page. So it's something we'd like to expose, um, is, you know, but um, it's just not there yet. But it's, it's on our list. It's on our radar. Okay. Yeah, good question. That would be really cool. And I, I back to the Hangouts, I asked, uh, I guess in the first, well, the first of these Hangouts that I was aware of, if at any point we were going to be able to access the main video window or the main video element and the thumbnail elements for each of the people in the Hangout from the app? Uh, in terms of more media APIs, that's definitely an area that we want to grow. Uh, There's something really interesting. Uh, the, the, the challenge with something we can overcome is the way the film strip is done. Um, we're using the Google Doc plugin, um, which is a pretty advanced piece of code. It's uh, C++ code, and we compile it, we distribute it, uh, you know, slow release cycles. Um, what it does is it actually muxes all the videos on the client side. Um, which is why we're allowed to do some really cool, um, you know, multi-streaming video. Uh, but that to break it up apart and make that efficient is something we're just we have to yeah, work through. I mean, right now we render the film strip as one big chunk that goes and, uh, and right. gets placed on top of your thing. So we don't we don't have the ability to knock those pieces loose. Um, uh, but yeah, that that is absolutely something we're we're uh, we're interested in and actively investigate. And when the Hangouts with the apps come online, I know you guys don't talk about the future, so feel free to say I'm not going to tell you. But no it would future. be really great to... Past. Pardon me? There's no future. There's only the past. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really great to have them with extras and with the on-air capability as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So we could actually demo the apps during office hours? Yeah. That will be there you go. That would be great. Um, yeah. And yeah walks, walks through an app with the developer would be... Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. We're, we're totally excited about on air. Uh, as you know, it's in a growing field trial. A lot of it's already in the hands of a lot of people. Some of the folks are in your have it. President Obama. <laughs> For example, um, and as we're building out the infrastructure and the quality, and we talked a little bit about moderation tools and things like that. Um, and as the platform matures, I would love to see a day where they can kind of be used together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Our plan is definitely to kind of all the Hangout features to converge over time. Um, in this, in the sake of just getting features out to people quickly, things have kind of gone and gone uh, along. It's, a, it's allowed. Channels. It's allowed. But it's allowed teams to work quickly. Yeah. Uh, and and iterate quickly, but it does it does mean that they have to kind of diverge a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, you can see that the UI is different between the two and stuff. So so uh, yeah, but bringing those together is definitely a, a yeah. part of the part of the future. Yeah, that's that's a big part of our plan. Cool. Um. So G10. Um, asks, well, it has two questions, two separate ones, I'm going to answer them machine gun style. Um, by, the first one is, when will the G plus gains API be open to the public? 
Um, so uh, Google Plus Games is something we're still baking in the oven. We have about, I don't know, 30-ish games. You can see that on the, the Games tab. Uh, and we're working closely with partners to really build out what we want that API set and what that platform to be. Um, it's an awesome part of our product. Millions of people play games all the time. Uh, and we're getting great feedback in terms of features and functionalities. Uh, but that's, that's a little bit ways off. Yes. I guess uh, this is another one of those areas where you've got two groups of people working in de separate rooms. But I'm building a game app inside the Hangout API. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it might fit better inside the Games API if the games had the video component as well. Is that part of the plan? Well, so we, we, we're biased because we work on the Hangout apps. Um, the Hangout apps are awesome. And <laughs> the Hangout apps and, Hangout and, and Google Plus games are kind of different beasts. Right? Games totally work in Hangouts, but those games tend to be tailored to um, utilize the multiplayer, the real-time component, the video, and the audio. So if you're building a game that lever le leverages that video piece, that probably belongs in a Hangout, right? Um, it's the, uh, the other way around, like putting a game inside of a Hangout versus trying to put the Hangout features inside of a game. Uh, yeah, but can you imagine like a person playing like chess? Mm -hmm. Right? And so you could have you know, the video, you could see your opponent, you guys could be trash talking each other, but also moving the pieces around on the chess board. Exactly. And that, yeah. that's, that's a Hangout app. That's a game. Yeah. Right? Perfect use case. Cool. So I see that uh, Mike just joined uh, the, the Hangout a few minutes ago. And he's typing. And he's typing. So feel free to... Um, the uh, Hangout gadget for iGoogle. So feel free to turn on your mic and join us in the conversation. Oh, it's okay. Read he's, he's, he's chatting. chatting. Yeah. It's cool. Oh, yeah. So your, your question is, which Wolf already read, and I talked over him. Will there be a Hangout gadget for iGoogle? Hello. Um, <laughs> Hi, Mike. Uh, right now, the only place to launch a Hangout um, on the web is from the stream. Uh, and that opens up a new iframe. Uh, and then for mobile, uh, Android and both iOS now supports launching it from Messenger app. Uh, and that's, that's all the plans we have for right now. So not an iGoogle. For sure. yeah. and, the, and the iGoogle, the iGoogle gadget spec is different than the Hangout app spec. Yeah. Uh, so they're not, they're not really overlapping. Right. So it wouldn't be a core feature of iGoogle. Um, that's pretty unlikely. So last question from G10, at least for now. Um, can you discuss how Google Apps, Google App Engine will work on G Plus APIs? More example would be helpful. So Google App Engine and the Google Plus APIs. Um, if you've played with any of our starter projects, um, the Python or the Java ones, you'll notice that um, our examples, or even the Hangout one, the Hangout starter app, our examples all use Google App Engine. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because we're familiar with Google App Engine. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's free to get started. Um, and we can give you instructions um, that will we'll get you going pretty quickly um, because of that familiarity. Also, we're a little bit biased because it's Google App Engine. And the, you know, the Cloud we, DevRel team, they're pretty cool guys. We think it's nifty. Yeah, we think it's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you haven't checked out the um, the, the, the app the engine Pi stuff? The Python or the Java app engine starter it'll get, apps. It'll get you started right away. Yeah. Um, the starter apps are, um, which we'll link in the show notes, the starter apps, um, all of their app engine versions of all of them, and very cool. But the kind of connection um, kind of ends there. Other than the fact that Google app engines, you know, in our cloud, so you're going to get pretty good response time to our APIs, it's, it's pretty independent. You're, you can use the Google Plus APIs from any hosting provider that you choose. Um, we just, you know, made App Engine our, our sample uh, location. Let me see. Uh, um, fully independent, but App Engine's awesome. Check it out. <laughs> I've got a question about image resources and how they're used in Hangouts. Um, so Sorry, can you, you, yeah, you get, you're a little blurry. Yeah. Uh, Audio-wise. A little bit muffled. Uh, or, or type your question into chat. All is good. Or your statement into chat. Your question. <laughs> he says, oh. on. <laughs> we'll emote for you. Question about image resources. Oh, this is, this is in the Hangout API. So image, for those of you who are following along at home, uh, <laughs> you can allocate image resources to use as face overlays in the Hangout API. 
which is a really fun feature. It's a great way to get, if you're just starting with the Hangouts API, it's one of the <coughs> most instant satisfaction, instant joy. Yeah, I was going to say, it's API. totally fun to play with. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there's a nifty sample with uh, monocles and hop hats, which we strongly recommend you download. No. Um, the, uh, uh, the question about inventory is, how much memory do they use since they can't be garbage collector to clean up at this time? Uh, at this time is an excellent phrase to use there. Uh, uh, and keep it going. Uh, and I've got an app in progress that will be allocating lots of graphics one by one and then discarding them. Um, yeah, uh, I think I uh, I think it depends a little bit on on how much memory the plugin is allowed to use uh, because uh, it, and that depends on your system configuration. In general, the um, I think I ran a test on my on my MacBook Pro here, uh, and I uh, I allocated about. 200 of them before the the uh, plugin was like, all right, that's enough. Let's just stop, shall we? Um, uh, and uh, right now, it it uh, uh, if you run out of memory, it actually just halts the hangout, which is uh, obviously not a place we want to end. <laughs> that is under development. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually halts the hangout because you will have actually Bloody run yes. out of memory inside the plugin, which is what it's going to do. Um, so yes, go gently on the uh, 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 on allocating those. Uh, I think I, yeah, I had one that allocated one about every second, and it ran for about 250 seconds and then killed itself. Um, so that's not science. That is that is field experience. But yeah, that's it's in that range. Um, uh, so uh, with regard to why it halts, it's a pretty simple answer. A lot of the Hangout API stuff is handled by the the plugin, not just the video stream. So they're kind of interconnected. So as we make the plugin better, we make the Hangout API better, mm -hmm. uh, more performance, uh, add new features. So one of the things as a result of our fun experiment was taking that feedback back yes, to the plugin absolutely. team. Like, hey, look, look at this. So garbage collection improves, resources swapping out improves. So uh, they're taking that and they're going to work that into the next plugin, which means they have more stuff with API. Welcome, Nicholas. <laughs> Sip. Nicholas Sip, thanks. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the, the post. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, translation. These are... Geez, yeah, you're just full of questions today. I wish oh. I knew your first name. Unless it is G. Uh, is there a way to call functionality in the G plus Android app via another Android app? Hmm. So you're thinking of like an Android we use Intense pretty heavily to communicate between applications. So one of the ways this, this may work um, would be to create Intense that would cause things to happen in the Google Plus app. We don't have any of those yet. But it's something we're actively working on. Um, and when we have it ready, it'll be really cool. Does our starter Java project cover, it covers basic um, Android, right? So the Java starter for the Google Plus REST APIs includes an Android application, in addition to a command line, a generic um, a web application, and the Google App Engine sample. And the Android sample shows you how to interact with the Google Plus REST APIs from Android um, in, in, in a nice way. Um, so you can write neat Android apps that use the read APIs. But that does not interact with the existing Google Plus application on the device. Um, that would require us to expose um, hooks so you could, you could interact with it. And those are not available yet. Um, but it's something where we're, we're figuring out. We're going to have a plan. It will be really cool. Hang tight. Um, one of the questions was, uh, do we have a way to automatically shift uh, languages? Um, Translate. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Shift. It's like magic. Drop in another language. Um, uh, that'd be cool. You should add that to uh, send feedback. And then also, um, I think there are Chrome extensions out there that will let you uh, shift pages, uh, uh, translate pages using the Google Translate thing. So uh, if, if you're, you're getting hung up right, you know, send feedback. But if you're getting hung up right now, you should investigate some of that. Yeah, if I remember it, I believe I've actually seen someone um, playing with the Chrome extension that added translation features for individual posts. Yep. 
Um, and they, they can definitely, um, if it doesn't, if it's not out there, it, it, it could definitely be written. So Absolutely, you yeah, you, you could write it too. <laughs> yeah, this could be a cool project for you to come write and, and show us. Ah, uh, there is one. I don't have the name off the top of my head, and there might be a couple, bun one bundled up with a bunch of other features, um, but we can, we can check out. I'm sure some people in the yeah, in the hangout sure industry. You guys, you guys can probably go. Yeah, uh, probably are able to use a search engine to find that. Um, but yeah, so it, uh, Google Plus is an international product. We support a bunch of languages. Uh, That's the cross language, cross locale piece of it is a bigger challenge than just translation, uh, especially just words because you have other pieces that are not translatable, like gifs and images. Yep. Um, so. We're working on that as an international product and an international company um, to make that a priority. But yeah, I agree. It's pretty cool when you when you watch a stream and then the clock turns. You can see the clock passing in daytime in Asia, and all of a sudden the posts start coming up in languages that I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <coughs> Very neat. Um, so we're hitting twelve sixteen. Um, it's usually when we try to wrap things up. Yeah. So are there any questions from the participants? We don't wrap up at twelve fifteen because it's not. Not a factor too. Any last system. questions? Or is there anything else on the? Uh, I, I think actually that's uh, 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 we, we a lot of the uh, no. I think we're good. We're good. Yeah. So well, we've answered all the questions we we found during <laughs> during the duration of the hangout. This was a lot of fun. Um, thanks to everyone who joined the hangout. Um, we will. Oh, wait, there's one quick question that just showed up in the chat, which we will address. One more quick question asks Mike. About the iGoogle gadgets, can you add a plus one to a gadget page? No, to the ad gadget page. The ad gadget page. Ooh. This is a good question. Um, I don't hmm. know. I believe you stumped us. <laughs> <laughs> we are not familiar with that. That's so uh, well, I, I think the question is, for the existing um, gadgets that we have in our uh, iGoogle gallery, uh, can we add a plus one to each one of the gadget listings? Oh, is that is that what you're asking? Yeah, right? like this page. The, the gadget gallery. That would be really cool. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. We will definitely relay that feedback to the iGoogle team. Um, we like the plus one button, and we want it to be more places. So it would be would putting be it on our own product seemed like an excellent choice. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, even today, uh, we don't have the plus one button there, but we have the Chrome extension that allows you to plus one yourself uh, any page on the web. And of course, if you find the pages in the search results on Google, you can also plus one from there. So we do collect those plus ones, um, even if it's not directly from the site. Great. Okay, look, well, we will be wrapping up for this week then. Um, thanks to everyone who joined the Hangout, and thanks to everyone who asked questions, whether you joined Ask Questions or you asked questions on the, um, the posts. Um, and we will be back next week to answer questions and show you some cool stuff on the Google Plus platform. Thanks a lot, Jenny, and everyone else. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye everybody.